Urban Outdoor Adventures, teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. This week on Urban Outdoor Adventures, Sean and his good friend Dan McGill are float fishing for late fall steelhead. Today, Sean and Dan plan to fish several tributaries in Toronto and the county of Durham. However, many urban creeks and rivers can be found all along the north shore of Lake Ontario. The province of Ontario is undoubtedly a trout hotspot, especially for those of us who don't wish to stray too far from home. From Kingston in the east to Niagara Falls in the west, many urban centers host tributaries that sustain good runs of trout and salmon at various times of the year. A few productive tributaries are the Niagara River, Credit River, Rouge River, Duffins Creek, Oshawa Creek, Bowmanville Creek, Ganaraska River, and Shelter Valley Creek. Although the boys will drive to their starting points, the most effective way to cover water successfully is on foot. By walking up and down stream and stopping at various points to fish, the boys will quickly eliminate dead water. At this time of the year, it is imperative to dress warm, layer your clothing so that items can be removed if you overheat. Above all, be sure to wear comfortable footwear. This type of fishing requires miles of walking in a day. If waders or boots become uncomfortable during the day, it can really ruin a trip. Carry two pairs of gloves, one pair for backup in case you get wet hands. Frostbite can be extremely painful. This week's target species are rainbow trout. Other popular sport fish species available in Lake Ontario tributaries are Chinook salmon, coho salmon, brown trout, and brook trout. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. You're right, Dan. There are some fish down here. That warmed me up a little bit. My hands were getting a bit cold there for a minute. My float bounced, I think, I guess a twig or something down there earlier. And I kind of doubted myself there for a second, thinking I'd caught that stick again, but I set the hook anyway. If you see that float go down, set the hook regardless, right? It's just holding right in that deep water there. Yeah, there's a back eddy there, so they're they're holding on the edge of that back eddy. We right. got us some outflow of like a sewer, and then it's causing a bit of rapid, and they'll hold on the, the edge there of the back eddy. I gotta try and move this fish here. There it is. That's a good fish. Swirling down there, right? Eh? Yeah, I think we, you got a good one there. I got a four pound fluorocarbon leader on here. Oh, he just came off then. I think it broke actually. It, it, it felt like he'd got, um, felt like he'd got caught around a stick there or something. I'm gonna untangle my reel here and we'll get another one. Sounds good. I mean, you gotta love this, right, Dan? We're half an hour from Toronto, about 10 minutes from Pickering. We've been fishing Actually, a couple of the tributaries along the north shore of Lake Ontario, and uh, good job, Dan. There we go. We got a good one here. I think it's a female. I'm not sure. Seems to be fighting real hard for this cold water. It seems to be rolling a lot. That's typical with uh, cold water. They usually don't jump. They'll uh, roll around, but. No, it's a little buck. It's a good little fish. Just gonna have to take the hemostats to it. In this case, uh, it seems to be wrapped up. It's more important to release them quickly as fast as possible anyhow so that uh we can survive and as you can see there she goes what's going to happen is that uh that hook's going to rust out in a couple days and it'll pop right out it's a lot better than keeping the fish out of the water and trying to like play around within the sand whereas you can get sand in the gills so that's just a little tip i'd like to give anybody who 
who does steelhead fish. It's important to get these fish back. I guess I should have fished that side then. There's a fish there, Beautiful Dan. fish. It's a lively one. It's great. That hit that uh, row bag there again. Yeah, it slammed that row bag. That stuff's fresh. So. I tried that worm again for a while, but uh, no takers. Yeah. Put the row bag back on and away we go. You see the float going to that? Yeah, <laughs> it, it went bang, counted right down. under. Like, yeah. There was no question that fish wanted that row that's bag, right. that's for sure. Dan very kindly uh, tied up some fresh row bags for us last night. Yeah, it's been doing pretty good so far. Can't yeah. complain. We're actually fishing uh, one of the many tributaries along the north shore of Lake Ontario here. And, yeah, uh, it's definitely a nice hand. Beautiful I mean, there's literally fish. dozens of these creeks, right? All the way along the north shore of Ontario, all the way. Lake Ontario. From Niagara Falls all the way over. Yeah, all the way down towards Kingston, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, he definitely wanted that. Yeah. I'm gonna bring him in, Dan. You wanna, sure. oh no, he's not ready yet. No, it's a fresh fish, like, it just recently rained, so we got a bit of stained water, but yeah, these fish just came in the last couple of days and they're ready to fight, right, like in the lake, so. What we're actually doing here is we we came out early this morning. We're going to be trying a few creeks along the 401 highway here, right? And yep. uh, as I said, no no specific names here because we don't want to give away Dan's spots. But basically, the majority of these creeks and tributaries will hold fish. That's a beautiful looking rainbow there. Beautiful fish. Thanks, oh, Dan. Oh, still wants to go. Still wants to go. <laughs> It's fun fighting them on these center pin reels, eh? Oh, for sure. Like, just yeah. you and the fish, no drag. That's right. Just using a hand here to control the reel. It's definitely like a good thing to get into. I mean, it is expensive to get your first center pin, but once you get it, yeah, you're hooked. Like, but I mean, if if you're starting out, you don't need to go out and get this expensive equipment. No, you don't. Right? You can you can go out, get a spinning reel, a nice long noodle rod. Yeah. You don't have to spend, you can get a nice setup for even a hundred bucks. And The idea is to get out there, give it a try. Once you hook into a few fish and, you know, if your budget allows it, you can upgrade your gear from there, right? That's right. Okay, I'll try and bring them in again here. Yeah, we definitely have a nice fish here. Beautiful hen. Nice hook set it. We got her. Perfect, thanks, Dan. Beady fish here. Uh, the hook's right in the corner. Nice hook set. There really we go. Really good hook set. Should pop right out there. Oh. It's important to wet your hands before you handle these fish. Like they have a protective slime. Yeah. So, did you want a picture or you want to? No, we'll go? let this one go. All right. But uh, Good nice fish. fish though, eh? Yeah, she should swim away no problem. They fight well in this yep. cold water, don't they? Beautiful. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Dad. One thing I want to touch on here which really gets my goat and I find absolutely disgusting. All along the riverbanks that we've been walking today, we found numerous piles of garbage, discarded pop cans, coffee cups, and bunches of discarded line. It's just absolutely disgusting to see. I already picked up two big piles today and put them in my pocket to take out of here. I'd suggest, you know, if you can, do the same. If you see something laying on the ground, pick it up, take it with you. We did notice today that there aren't a lot of garbage cans where we're fishing. That certainly doesn't help the situation, but it's certainly not an excuse to leave garbage laying on the ground. Take out what you bring in with you. Oh, that's a good fish there, Dan. Oh, he took you right around that tree there. Yeah, eh? I'm around that log there. Oh, think you get him out? I am hoping I can. It's gonna be real tough. Oh, a lot of snags in here. Yeah, we got a lot of snags. While we're like, fishing. You got him out, Dan. Yeah, I got him out, which is quite lucky because usually yeah. the odds are not in your favor, but that is a good fish. I had a good feeling. Oh, there we go. She's right out. So Perfect. And we should point oh. out using oh. that ice. Wow. Jeez. We got ice on the water here. That log is not helping our situation out. And she's out again. Wow. That is not good. I'm playing with fire here. We've got four pound uh, leads on. Is it a four pound lead? That's a four there? pound lead and running. So, I mean, if they get tied up around there, that's gonna be a tough job getting that fish out of there. 
But you need the, the light leaders in this clear water like this, right? She's ah, out. it's gone. Jeez. That was a good fish then. That was a good fish. That's okay. You got to fight it for a while, right? That's the main thing. Yeah, that's right. I'll get mine back in here. Sure. Beautiful thing with these center pin or float reels like this. When you get a snag like this, there's a big log out here. You just simply put your finger on the spool, stop the line going out, slows it down. You'll see that float start to move out away from the log. And basically what you're doing is performing a controlled drift. And you, what you can do by utilizing the reel is avoid getting caught up in those snags. I can force that float to drift back out away from the log, but continue my drift without reeling in. The center pins take a little more practice over the spinning reels, but you might want to give them a try. Beautiful oh, fish. Dan. Beautiful fish, Sean. Yeah, that nice is a very fish. good fish. Let's see if we can land it, eh? <laughs> yeah, let's hope we can uh, get this one on the bank. That's the tough part. That was on that pink worm. I switched over from the row bag. We've been fishing row and uh, kind of slowed down a little bit there. So I put on one of those little uh, three inch pink worms and seem to do the are. trick, eh? He just, yeah, he hit that pretty good too. Wow, that's a beauty fish, Sean. Yeah. Looks like you got a nice female there. Probably about between six and maybe eight pounds. I tell you what, Dan, it makes you forget about the cold when you get one on, eh? Yeah. You got Just in this right in the middle of this drift here. I got a tree coming down, a fallen tree there coming down into the bank. I just threw it off the end of that branch there and let it drift down into this deep, deeper pool here. And uh, he just inhaled that thing. Seems that like a lot of our fish are at the head of the pool. Yeah. Like today. Sometimes you think they're moving up or do you think they're dropping back? Well, it seems like uh, with the melt from the, the, as the sun's coming up, they're melt, it's melting, right. right? I guess they're hanging out at the front of the pool. Maybe things are coming into the pools, like food. Right. Things are drifting out, like worms will thaw out, and I guess at the front of the pool, I it's a good Tell you spot. what, it, it's a good question. We get a lot of, I had a few emails last year asking about the run, right? Like this is fall now, it's um, sort of late November. It's, it's bloody chilly, I know that. That's right. And, but there's also a run in the spring. Now, I was always under the impression there's two runs, but you were saying to the contrary of that, right? Well, basically what's happening here is in the fall, after the salmon come in, the steelhead will come to the mouth of the river, they'll move in, they'll chase the, the salmon spawn, and basically it's a head start for the spring, the spring spawn. Right. So these fish are gonna have a head start over the fish that run in the spring. Gonna have to step in here. Nicely hooked right in the corner of the mouth yep. there. It's a great fish. Actually, it's a buck. You notice how I let Dan put his his hands in the cold water over mine. This fish seems to be uh, recouping from a lamprey mark right here. There you go. There it is. There we go. Beauty. Perfect. All right, I'm just gonna drop that there and grab the camera if you don't I'm mind. I'll get you to take a quick picture of me. Sure, no problem. CPR. Brought to you by Nikon Digital Camera. Ready? One, two, yeah. three. Beauty fish. Ready? Perfect. Nice shot. Nice. Got a bit of a kite there, eh? On the jaw. All right, let's get him back. Should have no problem with that cold water. No, it's pretty lively, this guy. Yeah. There he there goes. goes. Nice fish, on. Beautiful. Frozen hands, but well worth it, mate. Cheers, thanks. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Sean Steelhead inhaled a three-inch plastic worm drifted through a classic-looking pool. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. The pool was five feet in depth at the deepest point, tapering up to one foot at each end where the faster-running water entered the pool and where it rejoined the main creek flow. The pool had various pieces of structure strewn throughout, including overhanging and partially submerged tree limbs, rock and sunken logs. Migrating fish will hold in areas like this as they make their way upstream. Trout will take advantage of the security that the deeper water and its structural elements offer, often holding very tight to submerged objects. The strike zone in this scenario was the area between an overhanging tree at the head of the pool and a submerged log located halfway down the drift. The feisty trout were holding tight to the edge of the submerged log in approximately five feet of water. Sean cast his float to the right of the overhanging tree and allowed his float to drift down the pool. 
By manipulating the precision action of his float reel, he was able to palm the reel at certain points to maneuver the float strategically around snags that were visible. Rainbow trout will rest in areas where faster currents of creeks and rivers slow down. This does not necessarily apply only to deeper, more obvious pools. Small boulders, sunken log jams, undercut banks, and gravel humps are often enough to create mini back eddies that trout will hold in. Look for subtle differences on your favorite creek. Productive baits for fall steelhead are salmon roe, plastic worms, and steelhead jigs. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. So Troy, I've been using this uh, digital trolling motor this season, and I gotta tell you, I'm very impressed with it. Over the analog models, my batteries seem to be lasting a lot longer. Well, with the digital, it takes less energy and less battery power to steer it. The old style analog drew more power to keep a consistent flow going to the engine. Now, these digital, they can shut off and on, off and on so fast that you don't even notice it. Now this is a 36 volt system. Yes. So it runs off three 12 volt batteries. And uh, like you said, two, three days this thing will last me, as long as you're not running it full power the whole time, which very rarely no, do. No, that's right, unless you're in heavy water or heavy uh, current applications. Well, thanks very much again, Troy. Thank you very Cheers, much. Man. Sean, boys. She's fighting put, real hard. Putting eh? me to shame here, Dan. Yeah, she's fighting real hard. Got a good, good fish? I have a feeling this fish is uh, a very good fish. Oh, <laughs> oh, there's another one that just moved. See yeah, that? Yeah, there's a lot of fish, a lot in, of fish in, in this pools. pool. She's coming back up. I'm just hoping there's not too many snags in there. You still yeah. running that four pound lead? Oh, I've actually gone down up the three and she's off. Oh no. Jeez. Got your bag and everything, eh? Yeah, I just spat the hook there. Name of the game with this type of fishing though, I guess, right? You that's lose how a lot it of fish. is. You lose fish and I mean, that's why a lot of guys like fishing for them. They're so hard to catch or elusive. It's more of a hunting. Well, you're, you're fighting them on such light tackle, too. Yeah. I mean, it's a real test of skill, right? right? Trying to get these fish in. That fish was fighting hard. I, I, I know that was a good fish. So there's a lot in here. It's just a matter well, of time. Well, I saw the one move out as that fish went through. Another one came out. So it's probably caught a few yeah. stacked right up on that edge there, right? Yeah. You were pretty close to the bank when you That's hit right. that. What we got here is a, you can see the sand here goes out fairly shallow and it drops down right on that outside edge, right? So what have we got there, about four feet of water? Probably? Yeah, you got about three, four feet of water. And they're just gonna hold there, especially with this low clear water, they're just gonna, the fish are gonna move around and as the water starts to drop, they're gonna find the holes that are the deepest and they feel most comfortable and where they feel right. safe. That's why you're gonna find a lot of fish under logs and under undercut banks, because they feel protected there. You'll notice today I'm, I'm wearing gloves and Dan's wearing gloves, it's pretty cold, eh? It's, it's in the minuses right now. That's right. You can sleep in on days like this. I mean, you got ice flowing through the river. These fish are slow, like their metabolism is down. Usually around 9, 10 o'clock as the sun comes up, you could actually come to the river and that's when they'll start to turn on. So usually the first light is good when it's warmer, but when it's colder, definitely you so want to... So then it starts to warm up a little bit, up. the fish will turn back on. That's right. Yeah, so basically if you just... If you can find any river or creek that feeds into Lake Ontario, I mean, they're gonna have fish, whether it be salmon or steelhead. So it's a matter of just getting out there, finding some clear water and finding the pools and then come back when it's a bit higher and dirtier and you should get fish. Yeah, I think we should uh, think about heading off now and uh, go to the next pool while they haven't been touched by anybody with this clear water. When you hook a fish, they, they usually, spooky. they tend to spook. So it's good to keep moving and then let the pool rest a little bit, come back later. So yeah. why don't we head off and Try something a little different. I'm into we'll... that. Okay, I'm going to run you through the baits and tackle that we've been using here today. As far as baits go, primarily we've been using the pink worm and row bags here, which uh, Dan actually kindly tied up for us last night. Why don't you show us the rig there, Dan? Because the key factor here is actually is not so much the bait, but the presentation, presentation. that you use to the fish, right? For sure. You want to start out with your small clear flows for the clear conditions. Then you're going to have a few. Uh, split shot right underneath just to stabilize the float. Then you're gonna work your way down with smaller split shot until you get to your barrel swivel. At that point, I will usually use a small three, four pound fluorocarbon leader and uh, to a small, smaller split shot and into a small hook with a row bag. That's basically the rig. So you're basically tapering your weight from heavier to light at the bottom. You've got your light leader. And the reason for that is with the lighter split shot at the bottom is so that the, uh, the bait will actually drift ahead of the float and right into the path of the fish's mouth. Correct. 
As far as equipment, uh, we're using center pin reels or float reels, as a lot of you guys call them, right? Yeah. And uh, now so. on the reel, we've got this um, uh, fluorescent line, right? This is, um, I'm not exactly sure what type of line. It's monofilament, basically, monofilament right? Line. But that allows you to track it on the surface when you're drifting. That's right. right. It makes it easier for me and the people if I'm fishing beside uh, people. Just see where your line is and right. don't get tangled up. Great fun for fighting the fish. Got a 13 foot six noodle rod. You want that uh, extra length and a bit of whip in the rod to allow you to fight the fish on the light line. All right, let's get back to fishing, mate. Sounds good. I didn't even get a chance to get my line back out there, Dan. Jeez, didn't take long for that one to bite, eh? It certainly didn't. Wow. It's amazing how the action can just turn on, eh? Yeah, it seems to be a bit smaller than yours. Oh yeah, just think, a touch, mate, I think just this, a touch. I think after you uh, got the big one out of the pool, this one felt free enough to move around and... He was ready to come out and play. Yeah, it's a nice chrome fish. You gonna be okay with him or do you want me to grab him? Oh, up on the bank. I can put my rod over here, Dan. Sure. What did he take? Took a row bag there yeah. of uh, salmon spawn. Let me just get down here. I'm just gonna slide this guy right back out, Dan. He's pretty sure ready to go. And uh, unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week. And I want to thank you, Dan, for coming down. Let's get that fish back in. It's been a lot of fun. A little mm -hmm. chilly this morning. Got a few fish on the bank and yeah. uh, pink worms, row bags. Give it all a try. My name's Sean Rickards, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for yet another urban outdoor adventure. Okay, camera's right on the uh, reel there, Dad. Yep. Just get a roll. <laughs> Good catch. Nice save there.